Well, it was 2008 when I actually wrote it, and the world had been going through an economic collapse, and a lot of that collapse had resulted was a result of lack of ethics in the business community, mm. right? I mean, mm-hmm. whatever our different political views are, and I'm right of center, um, Wall Street misbehaved. We all, we all know mm-hmm. that. People within Wall Street misbehaved. Um, and so I began to think about examples where faith had influenced business and, and allowed companies to do noble good. Mm-hmm. And the, the, I, I would hope to do a whole series, and I might still do that, but Guinness suggested itself the most. I knew about the Arthur Guinness. I knew about the beer. I don't drink beer myself. I don't have anything against it religious, so I don't like the taste. I know that's weird. I don't like beer and coffee, so I get left out of a lot of conversations. <laughs> but... Um, but I was intrigued by how he began to, to brew the stout that he brewed. But what's most interesting to me is that Charles, uh, John Wesley uh, had an influence on Arthur Guinness early in his life. And Wesley was interesting because he had a vision for the free market. He had a vision for business. He used to say, make all you can, save all you can, give all you can to the glory of God. Mm-hmm. Well, for Arthur Guinness, this was like Magna Carta. This was like a Declaration of Independence. It was a It was a vision statement for uh, what he could do because he was becoming a very, very prosperous brewer. And that was, by the way, at a time when brewing was already kind of uh, doing good in society because there'd been this horrible gin craze in Europe. So all of that to say that uh, this company not only made a phenomenal product that became the world's biggest brand, but it also began to use its wealth to alleviate poverty. Mm -hmm. Um, It addressed the uh, potato famine in uh, Ireland. Um, it, it made a huge difference. You just can't believe it. For, for just a quick little way to, to show you how this worked, um, how they took care of people. If you had worked for Guinness in 1928, and I noticed that this is a year before the Great Depression, not exactly an enlightened time for working mm-hmm. for large companies, you would have made 20% higher salaries than anybody else in your industry. Um, you would have had, good heavens, every kind of service, burial services, insurance, all, and, and, and a loan uh, company, savings and loan company. Uh, there would have been massage services. There would have been library services. You would have had intramural sports. Um, I mean, just every, if you, your wife at home would have been visited by nurses and healthcare people to make sure the home was in great shape and teach you how to co- teach you how to cook or whatever she needed to know to make sure she had a healthy home. You had retirement services. There was even a, a, a trip into the country every year that everybody was paid to take. And if you didn't have a wife, they had an internal dating service. They would actually help you find young lady to take out. No the way. Co- I don't no, recall that absolutely in the true. book. Absolutely That's true. Fascinating. I'd absolutely I'd be able to find. So if you were single working for Guinness, yeah. they would find a, a fine lady of character who would, you would take into the country for the day at their expense. It went on. And this is, again, this is uh, a 1928 version of what we now hear about from Google and exactly, Microsoft yes. and all these real advanced companies doing amazing things for their employees. Um, and, and I would, by the way, also mention, since we're sitting in Nashville, Ramsey, mm-hmm. Dave Ramsey Company, which does amazing things. Mm-hmm. So all of that to say that when I realized that they had made such a difference internally with their employees, um, every Irish mother said, be sure and marry a Guinness man to her daughter, Mm -hmm. um, and made such a massive difference in poverty nationwide and around the world, I thought this is a story I want to tell as an antidote to what was happening in 2008 uh, in so much of the financial community in our world. 